Can okay, that. But so it's a good, cool question. What was the first thing you ever borrowed? That's pretty funny. That ties right into what I just said no, that I borrowed this. You? But this isn't wasn't the first thing because this is probably when I was six or seven. No, uh, we know what the first thing. All right, was. so I'm gonna tell you what the first thing I borrowed was, and I think I actually talked about it on the Steve Becker show. But yeah. why not talk about it on here so yeah. I can even tell you two about it? It was it when was I was chocolate, yeah. three year, three years old, wandering around a grocery store by myself. So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I never give it up. I never you know give it up. Take, take, taking that crown from you. I worry about you. I never so let me break, 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 break it all down for you. I never give it up. I never you know give I'm it up. Take, take, taking that crown from you. I Welcome to Breaking the Cycle oh. Podcast, Episode Three. On um, today's episode, we are going to be continuing the 17 things your kids are dying to know about you. This is part three of who knows how many. We got some good questions oh, today. Oh, can't wait, can't wait. Yeah, these kids really put the pressure on me these last couple episodes. But also, on this episode, we are going to be introducing a new segment. It's called, what's the new segment called? Another hit from the nose. Please. Another hit, hit from the, the nose, please, where I pull up some... I pull up some hater comments, some comments from my my Instagram feed on uh, from the haters, different comments, and we talk about it. So I have two new in two new comments today from the same an individual on you know, two different posts of mine. It came in just today, so it's hot off the presses. Wait till you hear. So they haven't heard it before. I I, I let them hear the the comments, and then we talk about it, discuss it, and give a shout out to the brilliant minds that lead them. And just like they don't know what the hit from the nosebleed is going to be, I have no clue. What the questions, what the questions are. are that they're going to have for me. So we're looking forward to that. Keep in mind, guys, the mic is here for all of us. So all make right. sure you're speaking loud and clear for the mic. Why don't you tell them overall what the show is about? All right. Breaking the Cycle is a live show on how to be a positive male role model and lead your freak family by breaking the cycle and changing the trajectory of your family tree so that you become the type of man your son would want to become and the type of man your daughter would one day want to marry. Stop looking at it. Okay, continue. Okay. These are the types of conversations you should be having with your kids so they can learn to think for themselves and are not afraid to be themselves. So when they are eventually confronted with these life situations, they are not in shock and will have an idea on how to approach it. And that was your part, but you're over there still trying to find your little things over there. So I do all right, have so the things. I just lost what do, we got, what, do we, what do you all want to start with today? You start with the, you know, with the questions right off the bat? Let's get the yeah. questions going because then we end up only getting... They ask but a question and it leads first. into... No, we're already on this. We, we, they ask a question and it always leads I into two or three follow-up questions and they start giving me these flashbacks. They're asking some... Dead. If you haven't watched episodes one and two, make sure you go back and watch those. These kids are asking some difficult questions, but they're turning into awesome conversations between the three of us. So I suggest that any of you listeners out there, you have these type of conversations and answer these questions from your kids because I'm thinking they're thinking similar stuff to me. I don't want to be able to see that. I could almost see that. Okay. Don't give it away. All right. All right so what's, okay, what's the first so question? Can we please start off with starting you? No, we're starting with the question right now. Okay. So. So I'm going to no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go first. I'm going to go first. You always go first. So. This is kind of a dumb question, Makes but sense. we wanted to know this. Where did you get your first knife and what kind of like brand or what type of knife was it? Oof. Where did I get my first knife? I'm thinking. In the Marines? First, that's a tough one. Because you know when I was a kid, as much... As you you guys have both shot many different real guns. You both shot AR fifteens already. And you, you shot an AR fifteen when you were like yes, she did. I think she shot. We held it for her. And oh, no, she shot you the... shot nine millimeters. She even shot the the twenty two, obviously, pistol and rifle you shot. Of course, those are your favorites are so easy. But and you held and played with and and tuck and take the guns apart and the knives apart and all this stuff. You know, when I was a kid, my mother wouldn't allow me to have or play with a toy. Any kind of knife like, or with, gun, like, a toy. Gun. One time, remember that. Remember that. I think on one of the first episodes, my first birthday party. Did we go into that? And one of yeah, those, first or was that on? Party. Or was that on the Steve Eckert show? I don't oh. remember. So my uh, first birthday party. I think it was on the Steve Eckert show. Yeah, it was on the Steve Eckert show. But my first birthday party, a kid, a kid showed up. That, that's releasing tomorrow at <gasps> eight a.m. Tomorrow, 
So, oh, no, no, together. not tomorrow, because this is going, this is episode three. So, this we do record these always weeks in advance. We batch process these. So, but anyway, back to track. So, yeah, I, back on track. When I got it, because I didn't have any real toys, I got all like crappy toys for birthdays and Christmases. But even this kid gave me these G.I. Joes one time for, for my birthday, and he forgot to even leave them because he left. And go listen to Steve Eckert if you want to hear the story on that. But even let's say I got a G.I. Joe that came, they would always come with these little rifles or little weapons and swords. This Marine G.I. Joe came with a sword that Marines hold, like for marching. And the other one came with some kind of like nunchucks and maybe a rifle. I wasn't even allowed to keep the right, the toy little plastic rifle that came with the G.I. Joe. I would have to throw them out. Why? I'll go ask your grandmother. I don't know. She's right. like a bench. I need to put a note. She's against like violence and guns and weapons. She would go to church all the time and church lady and she was against guns and knives and uh, apparently when you do stuff like that it kind of backfires on you don't you think because i think yeah. we're, look literally right here i'm moving stuff around here in the desk you can't see it on the camera but look if i lift up there's a knife here there's actually right within my reach holy shit and look swiss i knew this is not and this is not even planned this is just what's back here is that just is there any other ones there's probably some more buried in here if i could find it just within arm's reach, there are five different knives. Oh, there's another one right there, the weird green one. The Oh, yeah, yeah. So th there's five right here. Not that weird. Six right here, within arm's reach, just behind this counter of this recording studio. And there's some other things back here that we're not even going to show you about because we don't want to put those on camera. I'm not going to say what those are because... Anyway. <laughs> you never know. So, so, I don't even remember my first actual real knife. I'm guessing... I think it was probably something like this, like a Swiss army knife that I think I got from my, like we would go to my grandmother's house. We'd get dropped off with six kids in each summer for a week by yourself at my grandmother's house. And then the next week would be the next kid. And the next week would be the next kid. We just get dropped there and my parents would leave and we're there at my grandma's house for a week. And remember back then there's no video games. There's no cable TV. There's not even any TV there. There's no TV shows to watch. So it's just like digging but it's kind of, it was kind of cool. It was like an old garage with all these old like tools and weird shit to dig through. So I think I might have found a Swiss Army knife, like not as good as this one. Like an older Swiss Army knife that was really crusty that had maybe like three or four things in it. But you know, it has like the corkscrew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's funny that you asked that. There happens to be the answer to the question right here. That's freaking weird. That's funny. It was literally something just like this, a little mini Swiss Army knife. The only part I'm not sure about, because things are blurry. I'm fucking old. So, oh, sorry for the language. Sorry kids show yeah it's a kids so show. but i don't remember if i found it when i was like digging through her garage also in her basement her husband was like a builder who built like models and little airplanes he was very oh, like oh yeah i remember grandma grandma gave me like three grandma's four. father yeah he was, he was in world war ii survived world war ii and then lost both of his legs both of his legs from amputated diabetes, from the right? knees down from diabetes think about that your health and your fitness your discipline and your nutrition Will kill you more than World War II. And six, how many people died in World War II? 42. Wrong. Come no. on, man. He learned that from Call of Duty. Exactly. We learned that from Call of Duty. So look, we look, look where one question goes to. That was 65 million. Unless it was 65 million years ago. Mm -hmm. It was the dinosaurs. Yeah. We learned that from video games also. So you learn yeah. something everywhere. Yeah, for, I think it was either 44. So I'm guessing it was a Swiss Army knife. The only thing is, I don't know if my grandmother gave it to me because she didn't really like. She like her husband was into that stuff, so she thought a boy should have something like that, and my mother just didn't know about it. Or you stole it. I may have just acquired it from. You may have borrowed. Borrowed it, and I just still haven't given it back. Is that done, or should we go into it? I think that's. I think that's okay. Yeah, that's done. Good. I just like babbled for like ten minutes. Okay, now. but so that's a good, cool question. What was the first thing you ever borrowed? That's pretty funny. That ties right into what I just. Said no, that I borrowed this, you? but this isn't wasn't the first thing because this is probably when I was remember. six or seven. No, uh, we know what the first thing. It was. All right, so I'm going to tell you what the first thing I borrowed was, and I think I actually talked about it on the Steve Becker show. But yeah. why not talk about it here so yeah. I can even tell you two about it? It was it when was I was the chocolate, yeah. three year three years old, wandering around a grocery store by myself. Think if I'm three, that's 1980. 1980, a three year old, it would be normal for a three year old to be walking around a grocery store by himself. Nowadays, like you see that happen, you're like, where the hell is that kid's parents? They should be just go to jail because the world is so freaking weird and creepy. Here's a question for you. Do you think the world is was at just as creepy and weird back then and we just didn't know about the internet or you think people got worse? What do you guys think? People got both. worse. Both. I think both. both. But what more? Internet. People got worse. People got worse? Why? Because back then, like, they're... I don't really know how to 
explain Oh, I think I know what. I, I think well, let try back explain. then it was just so common for kids to be like wandering around. I think it would be easier for like Exactly. A so why didn't it happen? Why didn't it happen like weird stuff and all these like child predators? You didn't hear it nearly as much. <laughs> they still existed cuz you would hear about it on the internet. I think, so that's why I think maybe I think, you didn't hear about it because well you couldn't hear about it right. No, I think to... I think they were around, but then just the, then the internet came out and that's when they started getting worse. And then now now literally everyone knows about them. All my friends know about them, or at least most of my. But do friends. you think that people got weirder and worse? So like humans are go basically humans are going downhill when it comes to like mm-hmm. their emotional control and mental capability and disorders. It sounds like I think that too. I think it was happening then. You just didn't hear about it that much because it was hard to hear about. Because where are you gonna hear about it from? On your radio that you're trying to dial in, your little black and white TV with a, a hanger antenna that's sticking out. So I think you didn't hear about it that much because it, but it probably wasn't happening nowhere near as much as now. Like child predator, crazy crap, like human trafficking and all this shit. It's like a billion dollar business now, stealing people and kids and selling them and abusing them and all this other kind of stuff. But it's things you have to know about. That's why we talk about stuff like this on this show. Your kids should know about that stuff. You shouldn't be shielding your kids from this shit because then they will become one of those statistics. Like you're, you're not aware. You need to have awareness. And you have to have what? What kind of awareness? Essay. Essay. What's essay stand for? Quick. Do you know? Situational awareness. Situational well, never, awareness. Never, never finished. Ep- well, you've learned situational awareness before that. But yes. he calls it essay or essay. losing his essay. And they're like, what is essay? I'm like, you know he's saying S-A as in we say situational I thought, awareness. I literally thought it was E S S A Y S A, like I so was. So by like, him screwing up on his race, you thought he lost his essay. He was writing an essay about I, I, how to not screw up on his race. He lost his situation awareness, like not paying attention yeah. to what's going on around him. So the thing was, question the first thing. So I was wandering around the store, three years old, and I'm hungry. I don't get candy. My mother also wouldn't buy any foods. This is where one place she was actually way ahead of her time, and now this is how we eat now for the most part. She was even better than we are now. She would not buy any food that had artificial colors or any artificial flavors. She won't buy any product. She doesn't buy any products made in China. Yeah, still I remember, I remember. She tried to make me throw don't. one of my stuffed animals because it was made in I know. <laughs> I, I won't, I don't go that far because shit. <laughs> she tried to make me throw and, and wait, can I just say a quick story? So on Christmas, I, it was, I was like six or seven and gr- grandma got me like this this blue jet, like this blue like toy jet. It's pretty big. And then I was looking around for that sign, the sign that said Maine is And it, it said that and I showed it to her and she lost her mind. She was like panicking about it. She was like- She will. She probably still has lost sleep and is still stressing over that now. And even though that was like three yeah. or four years ago. She, some, she probably wouldn't go to sleep for three or four days because of that, like seriously, like up, awake. But so, not on a regular basis. so we couldn't have artificial colors. We didn't have colors, so I would get. I never had desserts. Like there was no such thing as a dessert. Like there, well, usually there was no such thing as dinner. There was definitely no such thing as a family dinner. Do you know about? Do you know the last family dinner I remember, or the only family dinner I remember? It, and I was like a teenager at this point. The one time I, we tried when I was like a teenager, or maybe thirteen. I don't know. Seven Uncle Dave is twenty three. It ended with me running across the top of the table on top of the food, grabbing a fork and threatening to stab my father with a fork. <laughs> what? And you think it's funny, but think that was the only family dinner I remember in my life. Why were you ran across the because table? Because he was the- drunk and probably, uh, probably, you know what really probably pushed it over the board? He was drunk and saying probably horrible things and talking so much shit and treating us like shit and abusing us and probably talking down to my mother and all this other stuff and like mentally and emotionally abusing her. But you know what probably put it over the top? Mm. Nom, nom, nom. While he's doing all this stuff, he would chew and then talk. Imagine drunk and slurring with your mouth open while you're chomping your food. It's probably why to this day I'm still traumatized and I can't handle people chewing with their mouth open. Wait, did that I can't either. Happen? You ran across the- On top of the little bit of nasty food that was there, on, like step, walk, running across it with a fork to tell them that Bare I- Barefoot you know, earth socks. I don't fucking remember. Where are my pumas? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the one family dinner I remember. What was the question? See, the problem with this is you break all- These questions you ask- What was some, the first thing you 
you ever bought? Like, did I ever tell you that story before about the fork and the table? No. No, I don't think no so. No way. So think about it. I will stab it. you. This brings up. Why did you think of that? That's I what thought, I said. I, I thought maybe he you. needed a fork. Yeah, it was going to help feed him. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was like up to his you. like neck or his chest or something. It's a true story. See, that's what. I, I like thinking of But that's just like the thing. Samurai. Think about what kind of childhood <laughs> must lead to a kid running across the table and feeling like that was their only option with their father. Think about that. What happened after that? I don't, like probably it, stopped fucking. I, me. Probably stopped fucking me so much. You know, when I was a teenager, teenager, like after like barely graduating high school, there were times when he would try to hire these. He would always threaten to do it, and I'm couple, pretty sure he attempted it a few times, and it never worked out. Hire an assassin kid, to kill you. Not to kill me, but yeah, he would hire these like wannabe goon, goon like like. What do they call like uh, thugs. goons, thugs from the from New York City and his little fake little gangster crews to come down to Rockland County to like beat the shit out of me? He would always threaten he's going to do that, and I'm pretty sure he tried it sometimes because a couple times like certain times you get in situations like all right something feels weird about the situation like those people are there like after me like how did this just happen perfectly this way? I'm pretty sure sometimes these people were there sent by someone and sometimes imagine they're sent by your own father. That's some weird shit. Anyway. Okay, can you what was the question? I don't even remember. See, so you bring me well, down. What was the this is what's called a rabbit hole. Borrowed. Remember, I said you dig down this rabbit hole. Like, look, that's what it is. But this was the point of it is to, to dig into these conversations. Get so, the would you rather me just answer the question and not hear about all these other stories no. about forks and goons and all this other stuff? That I never knew that. That is wow. So, walking around the grocery store by myself, three years old. They just have these candies, these little twist ties where you buy them for three what cents each. Rolls? Like Tootsie Rolls, but all the candy like cents. that. There's literally like... You know, Three the, cents. You know, the Legos? Now a Tootsie Roll is like five or six dollars. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but you know the Lego store, how they have like those containers with all the different pieces of Legos, like on the entire mm -hmm. wall filled? They could, it was like that with oh, different right. candies. Three cents each. Like maybe even two cents. Some I think were even one cent. And there was just a box. You literally take the amount of candies, you put them in a bag, and you put your money into the box. And they would trust you for that. And you take as many as you want... Literally a box, like a mailbox with a little slot in the top to drop your coins in. And once you put your coins in, they're yours. This is how the world used to work. And that was in my time. Even before my time, it was even more like trustworthy they than that. They actually trusted you. Yeah, and until they met someone like me because I was three years old and I didn't have three cents. I didn't even have one cents and I wanted some of those motherfucking candies and I took some of them and ate them because wandering around the store myself. I that was only one. I don't even like I don't remember tennis. it was one or two, whatever it was. Ten I think it might have been three. It was a chocolate. Maybe I got away with one and I went and took two more. I, for some reason, on the Steve Becker show, I said I owed nine cents. I don't know if that was a flashback or maybe it was three cents, but whatever it is, it's hard to remember those kind of details. And then after that. So then I went go to my mother and I say, when, when I finally, re, you know, probably 20 minutes later, wandering around the store, looking, I would look at these wrestling magazines and this other stuff and you karate read? karate magazines. Just look at them. Oh. Look at them and see them. There was always these self-defense ads. A guy says, he could teach you the one-touch kill. How to kill a man with the one finger. And all that. It was like these ads they would have in the, mag in the martial arts magazines or the WWF wrestling magazines. So I go to my mother. I go to my mother. I just keep checking to make sure it's still green. So I go to my mother and I say, can... Oh, do I have any chocolate on my face? She's like, what? I'm like, do I have chocolate on my face? She's like, no. I'm like, all right, cool. She's like, well, that's weird. Why would you ask that? So she got it out of me. She made me go to the store manager, admit that I stole the candies and pay him his nine cents or whatever it was. So that was the first but thing didn't have any money. that and after I stole. That, but then after that, I realized, hmm. If I didn't ask if there was any chocolate on my face, I could just... I could eat as much as I wanted. And think about it. Who's going to be looking at a three-year-old walking around the store as, as like, I could have... I was in heaven after that. I would. You think that was the last time I took the three little three cent candies? Hell no. That was, you think that was the last time I asked if I had chocolate on my face? Hell yeah. <laughs> so I'd get away with it every time. But then that led to a long career of being a criminal and stealing stuff and selling it on, putting it on the streets, stealing all kinds of things. We don't need to get into all that right now, but breaking into anything? cars, breaking into you houses, all kinds of stuff. Donate stuff? I don't know. All right. Let's all right, get let's off get, well, the we need, joke. We need a, yeah, we need a joke. Let's see what we got. All right. So if you haven't been on the sh hear the show before, the way the jokes go, they ask a joke. If I answer it immediately, I get 1.5 points. Like if I answer it right away, if I just know it. If I answer it within 10 seconds, I get one point. If I need a, a, a hint, I get a half point. If I need like ridiculous hint where they're almost giving away, I get a quarter of a point. And we see who wins for the day. Let's All go. All right. And they have to be semi-figure outerable because okay. they're like kind of what, not jokes. They're this kind is of a riddle. Riddles, this riddles. is a riddle, not a joke. What do you got? What comes once in a month? Twice in a moment, but never in a year. 
Once, we say it again. Once in a month, Once. Twice, twice in a moment, moment but never, never in a year. Letter M. Ding, ding, ding. Got it. That's a one and a half pointer. Or is it one and a quarter? One and, one and, a, half. One and a half. So I got one and a half points Adam. out of one. I knew it was going to be well, some kind of trick like that. If you're, if you're listening and you want to try to figure out these jokes on your own, pause it and try to figure it out on your own. Well, you said that after I already gave the answer. We probably should have said that before. Yeah. We but screwed that one up. that for the future. For the future. For the future. Yeah. All right. So we got another question. Oh, right, what do we do? Another hit from the... No. That's those her. She calls it. Ow. Mitch. Who's ready for another hit? From the nosebleeds. All right, so nose Wait, can we see the comment? Because the co once you read it, can we see it? So because it, so it like yeah, and and the posts that they're on, one of them, this first one. Oh wow, we got three today because two of them are on one post from two different people, but the same guy, J Dub two eight one. J Dub J Dub two eight one. Tag that person. Before we even hear his response, standing ovation for J-Dub281. 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 Who's the second one's username? i got to find it. I want to see so bad. Are you kidding me? What? I only forwarded two of them to myself now, not the third. All right, so the one that I didn't put on here, it was a video... Or a picture, a, a video, a picture, a video of us just working out. I mean, okay. actually, I mean, I can pull it up right here. I'm gonna pull the post up right here. Let's go to Instagram. I have the screenshots, but just in case we didn't have any internet. Oh, I, no, why not? S L T D. All right, yeah, we can go to L T D. Because you can still see comments on someone else's thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, this guy says, mm. "Is I, that J W two eight one or the new one?" I'll show you. We're gonna just pull up the post. We'll pull it up so we get totally accurate. All right. And we're witnessing so, this. So, the first, first time. one. Oh, man, I love these little things. Bit. Don't, don't read. I want to make sure this is not Please? first. Yeah, I don't want you to see it first. Though. Oh, there's J-Dub. All right, don't look at that one. So, that's the second one I want to show you. So, the first one. Exactly. Where are... There, this one. Remember this one about <gasps> you were guessing the they person? They had a hater on so he posted oh, today on this. This video was from a week ago or more than a week ago. I'll even let you read it if we could find him. J Dub 281. Oh, he responded. He said, named your kid after a chicken factory, shaking my head. Because your name is Tyson, and there's a Tyson chicken. His comment was named your kid after a chicken factory. SMH. This is a grown man. <laughs> Get in your chairs, your please. After Get in your chairs, please. You're off, off camera. You don't need to see it. I'm reading to it, and then I'm going to show you to you after. Your kid so after name your kid after a chicken factory. So I haven't seen his response. So I responded to that saying, quality message from what I'm sure is a quality person. I hope you're not over the age of 12 if you have time for this. Mm -hmm. And he responded. I know, I know you're not under 12, yet you are responding. Why do you have time for that? Arguing with people on Instagram isn't very alpha of you. That's his response. After putting a message like that. Wait, let's check his, pro let's check his channel. Let it's me ask you. Do you think it's going to be any public <laughs> no profile? No post yet. No post yet. Probably won't ever be. J-Dub has 25 followers and is his, following 134 people. I'm untethered and my ra rage. Rage knows no bounds. He has zero posts, 25 followers, and following 134 people. <laughs> and he's telling, it's not very alpha of me. So let's go on. So oh, today, this yesterday's. Is good. This is nice. So you're named after a chicken factory. Bok, 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 bok. Think about that. A grown man is taking the time to that scroll is, the internet, to go on someone else's page, to follow someone else just to find some stuff to talk about their offensive. kids. But don't wait. You know he, he what? He talks some more shit about you. The That's next one. bringing my day down. I'm going to be miserable for the rest of the day. This I'm next, one talks, you, this next one talks about actual haters. I'll even read this post to you so you can hear it. So I said, you should take a day off. You should slow down. You don't need to work out for so long or so hard or so often. You should have a cheat day. You should eat this or not eat this or train this way or not train that way. You need to live a little. When will it be enough? Why do you train so hard? Why do you train every day? You need to have some balance. I'm just It's just simulating what people will tell you when you're like leveling up, when you're working hard, when you're disciplined. It's like giving an example of what people will tell you to try and drag you down. And so I said, and then it says, F that. F your expert suggestions. 
whatever. And I'm just going on about that. Like, that's the point of the post, like that we train every day. We don't, don't let people drag you down. Don't let people who are not achieving what you're achieving, try to bring you down. Don't let people kill your dreams. I've never had someone that's in better shape than me talk shit about my working out. I've never had someone that makes more money than me be the one to talk shit about how how you make money. Mm -hmm. Like it's always someone below you, someone fatter, broker, whatever. Broker is somebody who's rich. Stupor. Stupid, stupid, er. So anyway, and then I say how oh, you haven't taken you, you haven't taken a, that Tyson hasn't taken a day off in almost five hundred days. How we got to the gym at three forty five to train before our flight back. If I told you to sleep in, and you know it's you should sleep in and not come work out with us that day, which would you have done? Still woken up. So, but apparently not to Chay Dub because he. Wait, wait, hold on. Can I say? Something? Oh, and he replies to this one also again. Wait, wait, wait. Can we? Can we? Can I just say something? So. For that 3.45 a.m. workout, when we woke up, so we worked out super early, we got to the airport, and you looked at the time for the flight, so we thought that the time would be at 10.21, instead it was at 12.21, and we got to the airport, we were ready to go to the gate and take off at 8 a.m., at 8 so we could have still slept in. Because we got there we super still, early because we needed to check in our guns for the flight. Because we bring guns with us around on the yeah. flight. We need to check them in and make sure, make sure we had extra time for that. And I was checking the time on my computer, which did not update for the time zone. On my phone, it was accurate when I looked at my computer when I was offline. So I was two hours off, but it turned out to be a win. What did yeah. we get to do with that time? We, we went to the United Club. We went to the United Club, and you two ate breakfast and lunch there because we were there so yeah, long. Yeah, I that there was some good. Food it was there. the that was the best food they ever had at United Club. Oh that man! Was and some well, good the United food. Food. and you know she actually jacked one of those donuts. It's up. Mommy told her. me to jack it. I bet she did. All right. And so J Dub, the United Club Polaris Lounge. So J Dub two eight one went to another post because this is a quality. <laughs> this is a, a grown man does this. For his next post, can we get one? Standing ovation. Standing ovation for J Dub two eight one. He says, "Sounds like Tyson doesn't have a life." S M H means shake my head. Oh my God. Sounds like his dad makes every decision for him. <laughs> now, does that sound like something an alpha would do? Not to me, it doesn't. This is J Dub two eight one. What is him with alphas? <laughs> I don't know. There's nothing wrong with him. I bet he's. So I commented on that. I said, you again? Because he's on my <laughs> other post and I see the same loser pop up. You again. I'm like, wipe, I told him, wipe the cheese duel stains off your belly. You know what, what I assume is a grown man is a drifter on the internet commenting on other people's shit. You will be my go-to source for all that alpha quality behavior. You effing tool. Ha ha. He says, shit, little, little bud. What a terrible response. I thought you were in alpha. Why do you respond like a little beta? This is a response. <laughs> Lil Bud, he says. Lil Bud. This is hysterical. We used to do these shows live. I almost wish we did so we could tag JDub281. And wait, thank you for giving one? us so it? much humor and content wait, for us to talk yeah, shit about our show. Yeah, another standing ovation. Another standing ovation. Yeah. I'm the one who's the one who stands. Well, because you're so little, you have to stand. That was the third. Oh, oh, because two, one, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? But you said there was another person. No, I got the other one. Oh, no, no, no there is another one on that same post. I, yes! I forgot. Yes, I That's love this. Things. I forgot. This is Slush Fiend. Slush Fiend. We gotta check is out Is that a bad house. word or can I say? It, it's not anything. He's got is zero. Cat? Slush, slush, slush Fiend, look at this. Slush Fiend. Look at their picture. <laughs> They have zero posts, six followers, and following 125 people. Okay, standing of course, for Slush Fiend. Slush Fiend, of course, a private account. What a shocker. Zero posts, six followers, and 125 following. The Slush Fiend said on that picture, about us at the gym. Where's the gym? Working out. Is it Horrible. Slush Fiend? Yeah, that, and then a picture of the three of us the other morning working out. Slush Fiend said, and Slush got, Fiend! Where is it? He said, I wake up every day grateful that I'm not you. How embarrassing. That doesn't even make any sense. I don't know. I wake <laughs> respond, up every- Respond, respond. I did, and he didn't respond to that. Celestine so didn't respond. I told What'd you him, I said, yes, you appear to have a very high quality of life. Fucking loser. Go talk to someone to deal with your issues. There are people out there that can help. 
because he's got it. What? <laughs> like that doesn't what? even make. I wake up every day grateful, grateful that, that I'm, I'm not, not you. you. How, How embarrassing! embarrassing. For, oh, for it's what? Embarrassing. Embarrassing. So embarrassing. That I'm not you for like hanging out with your family and your kids and working out, and staying I'm healthy. That I'm not going you. on a vacation. You know what? To prove that. Going on a trip to together. Prove that. I need to sit on your lap. Yeah, sure. All right, so there's our hit for the nosebleeds. I told you I had some good ones today. That was some quality stuff Slush right there. Slush Fiend! Thank you. A big shout out goes to Slush Fiend and J Dub 281, two quality men, was two that? two alphas right there. That still doesn't beat Cameron Steinhardt. I know, though. but they're good. They were good. They're, they're, and, they're, they, they're really and these Cameron came in just today. Steinhardt is those, are all, those were all just today. They all came in today. Those all are the comments we got today on just two different posts. One of those posts from a week ago. Okay, let's keep rolling. Okay, we got one, we have time Cameron for one more question. Cameron Steinhardt is the top alpha. You know, we're going to get to that. We're going to have to repeat that that hits from those on a future episode because now we have the podcast. We get to go talk about Cameron Steinhardt again. We'll get to that. We'll tell you all about that in a future episode. Yay! All right, we have time for one more question. Whose turn is it for a question? Me. Where sure? and how did you make your first dollar? Like your first, when was the first time Ooh. you made money? Oh, I was a hustler. I was a hustler ever since shit. Ever since I can walk, I was. I know. To... I know how I made my first dollar. I thought um, this was. I know. For I know. Me. I know. I'm gonna say my story later. So I was. I we would. I would go and sh same thing. Young age and some. Use sometimes with my sister. Sometimes I'd find some other kids in the neighborhood to do with me. Sometimes by myself. Back then, when kids really wanted to work hard and hustle and do and work hard for a dollar, literally a dollar, one dollar, if that, during in New York during the fall time, the leaves fall out of the trees and they're all over your lawn, like covered, like inches and inches deep for all your whole lawn. In the winter, snowstorms like crazy, sometimes a foot or two feet of snow in the snowstorm. So I'd go, we'd go door to door, knock on doors with a shovel in your hand. Ask them if you could shovel their snow. And they would say how, where, what areas they wanted shoveled. And depending on how many areas, you'd come up with a price, negotiate it right there on the spot. Think about it. You're young. Like we're talking under 10 for sure. And negotiating with an adult on how much money they're going to give you for your services. And it's going to be manual labor. Sometimes that shit would be hard. It would take hours. And one time there was this one house with leaves. It was a massive house, like an L-shaped around the whole side. And then there was a backyard. It's just, it was Five kids, five of us that we went together to go attack. We said, this was like the big score we were going after. We were talking about this house all like year that we're going to go hit this house up. We're going to work together. We go there. We tell the lady $1.50 and she's like, all right. And we go and do it. It took us like two hours. We bagged it all up, brought it onto the thing. It took us so long for five kids, maybe four, four or five kids, whatever. More, more, definitely more than three. We're done. The lady gives us six quarters. The way that we said it, maybe we were unclear and it was a lesson learned, clear communication in your negotiations. We met $1.50 each. This took us hours and hours of like hard labor. We're talking about massive amounts of leaves around a huge property. She gave us five kids $1.50 after like two or three hours of manual hard. We're, we're done. We just want to go home and go to sleep, labor. We got barely 25 cents each for this. Do you think four or five kids, a dollar fifty total? We got like thirty cents each. But you didn't you negotiate didn't once you got. We there. went back and we said, "We're like, all right, how are we gonna bring this up to her? Because we're all like kind of scared to do it because we didn't know what to say." So one person said, "We meant." Another person said, "A dollar fifty, and another person said, "Each." We did like that. We meant a dollar fifty each, and she said, "Are you out of your mind trying to rip me off, you kids?" And she slammed the door in our face. So we got like 25 cents each for like hours and hours. It was a huge lesson in negotiating and business and every like, but we were hustling like that all the time. I would make money going door to door, sh shoveling people's thing, asking if they needed any yard work done. I would clip their, like their weeds, chop, cut their weeds with a, a scissor or a knife or whatever. If they had equipment, if not, I'd bring my own stuff. I'd find some stuff. I was a hustler. I was going door to door all the time as far, I don't even know, all the time after school, Definitely on the weekends. Then I even had these catalogs. If you sold stuff, you got a percentage of the stuff you sold. And then the company shipped the stuff to them. And I was always trying to make some damn money. I would fill in people who had, I would find the kids who had the paper route. Once in a while, I'd fill them for them. So I didn't have to have the response. I didn't want to have the responsibility of having the paper route all the time. I'd fill them for them on the weekends and get paid because then you would get tips on the collection day. I was always hustling. This is like young. We're talking under 10 years old for all this, doing this shit on your own, sometimes with other kids, trying to make some damn money. And look, that's look, that type of thought and and 
operating as a kid and thinking like, cause shit, if I wanted cool shit, if I wanted cool toys or a candy bar, the only way I was getting it is, it is if I went and came up and found, either stole it, or if I wanted to actually buy it legit, I'd have to find a way to come up with the money myself. That's his life. So that was the next. You don't sound good saying legit. 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 Why not say legit. Oh, I'm I'm, I'm too I'm too old. I'm not cool enough like you. Oh, like this cool little kid. You don't sound like right saying, saying legit. All right. So uh, the first what time I I made my the like the first time I remember I was like four or five years old, and then we were in our old we were in our new York, new New York house. It was the the our real house and you you did your laundry and we were in your bedroom and you're like do you want to get paid to do my laundry and I was like yeah and he was like all right well it's the negotiated price and I automatically just like without thinking I said a hundred dollars and then you were like you were like no 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 how about Two dollars, and I just said okay. I was like, "You're the worst negotiator." You asked for a hundred, which is way like you outprice yourself. Almost made me not even want to do business with you. But I'm like, "All right, I'm gonna go super low." Two dollars. I figure you'd be like, "Oh, wait a minute, no, how about 20 And I'll say like ten. You'll say no, and you'll get like I don't know, eight, nine, ten, twelve bucks out of it. You went from a hundred to two. I said okay, and you did it for two bucks. I know. So, and I made you do it for two bucks. You learned your lesson in negotiating. Same way I had to learn with this lady getting my twenty-five cents to do our. I'm talking. But instead of three. Raking, raking seconds. leaves for hours and then putting them in bags and stuff and then bringing, carrying the bags out like nonstop work for hours to make 25 freaking cents. I forget what we did with it. We, since it was only $1.50, we used $1.50 and bought something that cost like a dollar something, $1.50 probably, and then just shared it. And that was that, like a, some kind of box of cookies or something. And then we just split the cookies up. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> it was not it, like, but if, if, if you have to earn your shit. So I'm going to ask you two, I'm going to flip that question on you. As kids now, now thinking about this and how being a hungry hustler and trying to make some damn money on your own and learn how to how to, how to be an entrepreneur, what are you guys doing these days to make money? Right now, I'm still working on what I'm going to do. I have a lot of ideas, but I just don't know yet. What are some of your ideas? I really like making bookmarks, so I might sell those. I also really want to do dog walking, but I think dog walking will have to be like when I'm like a little bit older, just pet sitting. Um, you can still together. do that. Why to your older? Because then mommy said that she would have to drive me so back what? to the people's you house. Give, you give a she cut. She said she probably You figure it out. You give a cut. All right. So what up? But you're so dog walking. You could do dog walking. And then you could just, and you do a, a interview, a call to the person. You find out what kind of dog, what they're looking for. And if it's something you can handle or something you can even bring to your house. Maybe it's small. You can keep in your room. You can have a, if they have a cage, maybe it's in a cage. Or you go to their house each day if it's close by. And you just find a time that we could bring you there. We work from home. You have school from home. It's not that hard for us to figure it out. Those are excuses and those are roadblocks that you can overcome. Don't you think so? Yeah. So let's make it happen. Can we get your commitment live here on the Breaking the Cycle show to make this shit happen? Yes. That's all I needed to hear. Done deal. What's the name of the company going to be? Did you come up with a name yet? I, I was <laughs> thinking that like it, I want to do outside the town, but I know that like I might need to start inside the town, right? So I came up with. Don't the... even say the town. Oh, so then I can't say the name. Yeah, you, 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 you want J J Dub two eight one showing up? Oh no! Actually, the name up, of our town. Actually, we kind of do want him to show up, but anyway. Yeah. All right, no, it's J Dub. I, I know this. Two eight one. We're no, gonna J2. email you our address. And so you can come over. I know this might sound weird the way I'm saying it because I'm not saying the actual name, but it's going to be the name of our town, Dogs. That easy. It's pretty simple, pretty simple, very clear and concise, but I bet let's maybe together you guys can come, help come up with some clever names. I bet some cool, yeah. catchy names that still makes it clear what it is. What about you? What are you All working right, on to make some right money? Right now, I am not still focused. doing your laundry for $2. You got to renegotiate that deal? <laughs> yes, I do. I do your supplements, and that is your vitamins and your pre and post workouts and that nasty drink that you take. You record my podcast. Oh, yes. I record your podcast. All right, but that's all like side. Yeah. That's little side jobs. What are you doing? What's your real main thing you're right starting now, to work towards to make money? Uh, Freak Fit, my kids' workout program. That is going to be out in a few weeks for, for sale. 
Just tell me. You ain't got to be all, all right, about all right, it. Just, all right. It's going to be. Uh, exactly. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Like, get feed, giving feedback right off the bat. Like, oh, just tell about it. You know about about it. You don't have to make it sound all little like that. <laughs> huh? What? No, you got to go back to your chair. You're wiggly yeah. all over the place. Like a wiggly kid. You're going to break the mic again. So, you're working on Free Fit, free and we're going to actually have a whole and episode. We're, we're going to be doing a garage sale soon. We're still working on that. And we have an upcoming episode of BTC of Breaking the Cycle where we're going straight, we're going into entrepreneurship and getting kids into entrepreneurship. And we're going to go deep into your things that you guys are working on, the different ideas you have and how you come up with the names and the logos and all that stuff. We're going to get into that at, in future episodes. We don't overdo it here. So maybe we only got one joke yeah. today. You have yeah, one more thing to finish us off with? No, I, I, Which mine yes. Okay, has... so mine. Sorry. Whoops. <laughs> mine. It's partially figure outable. Partially figure out. Great. Okay. Looking forward to this one. I so think you might know it though. What? So. Let's go. Let's hear it. What do lawyers wear to court? What do lawyers wear to court? Hold on. I'm making sure I get it correct. Now I got to re. You have to let the person say it back to confirm that they heard you clearly. You said that. I didn't finish it. And she went like that. I didn't feel I said the last word. What? Say it again. What? What do lawyers wear to court? What? Hold on. I'm gonna make sure I have it clear. You're kind of mumbling it. What do lawyers wear, wear to, to court? court. Stop. It's distracting. A suit, a tie, a case, a briefcase, a case. Am I on anything? Suit, tie, case, defendant, oh. jail, something. case. Is case something involved? No. Tie. No. Suit. Mm-hmm. Give. Three uh, seconds suit, left. Jumpsuit. Two uh, seconds. Prison suit. Uh, One second. Lawsuit. Yup. Last second. Lawsuit. Got it. Bam. Look at that. Two point five. Two. Uh, I got two point five out of two points. I win. And we know we still have one more. How'd you get? This first one I got one point five. No, you should have got a half point for that. For the first one. That, this one. A, yeah, it was at the last second. I got it within ten seconds, and there was no hints. That's a full point. Yeah. That's the regular rules. All right, while well, you're going to do your thing yeah, over there. So, All right, I'll get give one more joke. No, 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 we don't have to. We just, just please, let's wrap it up. Please, it's a good one. Then I have to, I'm back here. It's about. not a good one. Which, this which, has, dang it, fine. This has been Breaking the Cycle podcast episode number three. three. We will continue these questions. Listen, have these type of conversations with your kids. Have these type, have, let them three. ask their questions. What do they want to know about you? Because, hold on, actually, I have to come back with it and tell you something about this. I should have said this in the beginning. We did a Squire program. We did a Squire program this weekend where it's fathers and sons. There's sons from, they were actually as young as 10, I think, in this class. Because one kid came with his older brother. 10 to 15 or 16 in this group with their dads. And when I was alone with the sons, I asked the sons, how well do you think you know your dads? They said, not very well. I said, what percent out of 100 do you think you know your dads? They said, the highest, anyone said, was like 20%. 20. That they think they know their dads. Right now, then this we talked show about, we learned like three And we talked about being best friends with their dad and not even half felt like they were best friends with their dad. Wow. Like, so that. That is friends sad. with you, right? You better be, sucker. <laughs> so that is why we have these types of conversations. These are the types of conversations you should be having with your kids and the type of questions you should be asking them that they should be asking you and turn it into conversations to tell these kind of crazy stories they may not know about. Oh, what is going on over there? So. Flick Wars. Anything you want to finish off with? <laughs> Anything you want to finish the people off with? Take them home with? No! Excuses! Very, very, very normal children. We will see you next time. In case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses. And thank you to our sponsors, the two haters, or the three haters there on the internet. Let's give them a standing ovation to finish off. J-Dub and Standing ovation to finish off. I can't stand what up a J Dub two eight one and Swear Fiend? Something fiend, I don't know. Slo slush fiend. We will see you next fiend. time. Make sure. Make sure you smash, smash that, that subscribe, subscribe button. button. Click the, the notification, notification bell, bell and to annihilate that like button, whether you're watching on Audible, on Twitter, on whatever God knows where else. Spotify would be the main Spotify, YouTube. Apple Music. Apple Ew. Music. Yeah. Hit the subscribe button. We will see you next time. Breaking the cycle. You know.
so let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up, I ain't never giving up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you. I ain't worried about you, I ain't never So let me break, break, break it all down for you. I ain't never giving up, I ain't never giving up. You know I'm gonna take, take, taking that crown from you.